What's up everyone, Michael here. So today in this video, I'm gonna go over an algorithm example and code walkthrough of the popular leak code question, maximum subarray. This problem isn't super difficult, but I really like this problem because it's a good introduction to dynamic programming and how effective it really is. Before I jump into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. I actually just reached over 5,000 subscribers, so I can't thank you guys enough. Without further ado, let's jump into it. For this problem, we are given an integer array and we need to find the contiguous subarray which has the largest sum and return that sum. So first of all, what is a contiguous subarray anyway? Say we have the following array. Some examples would be one, negative three, four, negative one, two, one, negative five, four, or it could be the whole array itself. Essentially, all it means is all of the elements in the subarray have consecutive indexes. So in this example, our maximum subarray would be four, negative one, two, one, which equals a sum of six. Thus, we would return six from our function. With that out of the way, let's look at the brute force approach for this problem. An obvious but inefficient approach would be to calculate every single contiguous subarray. In this array alone, we would have all of these subarrays then for each, we would need to calculate the sum and return the max. When all is said and done, this results in a quadratic time complexity, but we can definitely do better. As for the optimized approach, this involves the use of dynamic programming using what's known as Kadan's algorithm. An optimization that is required is removing the need to compute every single subarray. Many of the subarrays are useless since their sum is less than others. So let's walk through a full example of this approach. First, we need a max variable to keep track of the maximum sum we calculate as we are iterating through our array. However, before we iterate over our array, we can identify what our starting max sum is by looking at index zero. The value at index zero by itself is its own contiguous subarray, and thus we can set max to be negative two. Then we will have a pointer starting at index one, and we will iterate over the array, computing the maximum sums as we go. Here's the critical part of the algorithm. Right now, our I pointer is looking at value one. We have two options here. The current position in our array stays exactly the same, one in this case. The other option is our current position becomes the current value plus the previous value, or in other words, negative two plus one, which equals negative one. All we are doing here is comparing this subarray and this subarray, but one is obviously greater which means we leave our current position the same. Now we compare our current max with the current value our pointer is looking at. One is greater than our current max of negative two, so one becomes our new max. What this is saying is one is our max subarray so far. So next we're gonna move our pointer to negative three and compare the subarrays. Negative three, plus the previous of one would be negative two. Negative three is also its own subarray, but when we compare the two, negative two is larger than negative three. Thus, we're gonna update our current position to have the larger subarray sum of negative two. We compute the max between our current position and max. One is greater than negative two, so we are going to do nothing. We move our pointer to four. Four plus the previous subarray sum would be four plus negative two, which equals two. We are comparing the four subarray with this subarray here, but the four subarray on its own is greater. Now we compute our max again. Four is greater than one, so our new max becomes four. Maybe you already figured this out. If not, that's totally fine. The formula that we can use is the following. The current position of i is going to be equal to the max between the current position or the current position plus the previous position. So just to break this down further, this part of the formula is the subarray of size one. This part of the formula is the previous subarray 
plus the subarray of size one. Then we are just setting the calculation to the current position. So as you can see, this completely defines what dynamic programming is. We are building off of previous steps. Let's apply this formula to the rest of the array. We move to negative one, and then we compute the max between the two subarrays, and we get a value of three. Then we compute our new max between three and four, and since four is greater than three, it remains the same. Then we move to value two, we compute the max between two and five, and five is greater, so we set five in our current position. Then we compute our new max, and five is greater than four, so that becomes the new max. Next, we move to value one, we compute the max between one and six. Six is set as our current position. Then we compute our new max, which would be six. Then we move to negative five. The max between negative five and one is one, so we set that as our current position. Then we compute the max between six and one, which equals six. Next, we move to the value four. The max between four and five equals five, and we set five as our current position. Finally, we compute the max between six and five, and our max remains as six. By the end of iteration, we are left with a max of six, which corresponds to the following subarray. Okay, so let's walk through the code for this solution. It's really short, very simple. We are given an integer array, nums, and then we need to return an int, which is the maximum sum. So first we can create an integer max, and we're gonna set this to the first value in the array. So we can just say int max equals nums at index zero. And then now we're going to actually loop over our array. So we can say for int i starting at index one. We're starting at index one because we already pulled the value at index zero. So we can say i is less than nums.length i plus plus. And then this is where we're pretty much just using the formula that we already created. So we can say nums at our current position is going to be math.max between nums at our current position or nums of our current position plus the previous position, which would be nums i minus one. And then we just compute our new max. So we say max equals math.max between max and then the current position we're looking at. And then finally, we just return max. So that is actually it for the code. Like I said, it's very short. Uh, let's submit. And as you can see, it passes. So our time complexity for this dynamic programming approach is going to be linear time, specifically big O of n, where n is the number of items that we have in our nums array. As for our space complexity, it's actually constant. We're not initializing any new memory in this algorithm. Feel free to check out some of my other Leak Code videos. I go over graph, tree, dynamic programming, try, and a bunch of other types of problems on this channel. Drop a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and have yourself a great day. Peace out.